Hello, and welcome to Sleeping on the ISS. I decided to do this talk because I came across some interesting information about sleeping, uh, sleeping accommodations on the ISS, and I didn't know about it, so I thought other people probably didn't know about it. So, here we go. So, the crew quarters on ISS are in two separate modules. Uh, for the, I guess what we would call the US quarters, are in the Harmony module. And then what I'm going to call the Russian quarters are in the Zvezda module. Um, Zvezda means roughly star in Russian. Now, Harmony has four crew modules uh, in this very nice picture. Pic picture. Um, we have four crew people standing, or standing, standing is really the wrong term because they're in zero, zero G. So they're floating um, in their individual crew modules. So four of these in the Harmony module. And they're about uh, two meters, two cubic meters of space per person. Inside they have light, ventilation, laptop power, and internet. And on the right, you can see a typical astronaut uh, in her, uh, what's called a more of a sleep retention garment. It's not really a sleeping bag. It's there to keep you from floating away. Um, and they typically sleep, at least the astronauts do, with their arms sticking out and their arms just kind of float in front of them, kind of in the position they are now. The picture on the left is a wide angle lens, so it looks a lot bigger on the picture than it really is. But there's space for laptops and, and just personal stuff. So you can think of this as really the only personal space an astronaut has on ISS. Now, in Russia, the, as I said, those are in the Zvezda module. And here's a picture of Zvezda. And, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Over here on the right, this picture with the, this door with this picture of flowers on it, that is the door to one of the crew cabins. Um, there's one opposite it on the left side. So... Uh, this is what the Russian crew cabins look like. You can see they're about the same size as the U.S. ones. Um, they also have ventilation, lighting, uh, internet, power. But the Russian ones are a little bit different. They actually have a small window uh, in the side. So you can use that to look outside if you wish. And there's a cover you can close. So... Those are the accommodations, or you can think of that as the permanent accommodations for people on, uh, for astronauts and cosmonauts on ISS. Now, the crew size on ISS has varied over the years. Um, it was designed for six permanent crew members initially. The plan, uh, at least when NASA was first thinking about the station, was that shuttle was going to be a shuttle. So think of it like an uh, airport shuttle. You'd put astronauts on it, it would take them up there, drop them off, um, and then it would come back down. And the idea was that shuttle would fly all the time and it would be very cheap. So you could go with that sort of arrangement. Now, as you probably already know, that's really not how shuttle turned out. It turned out not to fly very much and it turned out to be very expensive. And in fact, after the, the Challenger accident, there was a new rule put into place on station, and it basically says every, per every person that's on station needs a seat on a vehicle that can take them home. So if you have six people on station, you have to have uh, some sort of vehicle to take six people home. And this was problematic because shuttle could not stay at station. Shuttle can only stay uh, in orbit for a couple weeks. So, what does that mean? Well, for most of the life of ISS, um, most of the time there would only be three people and one Soyuz worth. So, most of the time, during handover between the missions, um, they would sometimes have six people there for a few weeks. So, it kind of oscillated between three people, six people uh, during most of the life of uh, most of the life of ISS. 
Now they would have times when shuttle would visit either to do construction or just for other reasons and that would push them up to 10 people and I think once it pushed them up to 13 people uh, when there were two Soyuz and one shuttle visiting. But as I said shuttle could only stay for, for a relatively limited amount of time. So with this approach, the capacity of four people in the U.S. section and two in the Russian section actually worked fine. So all the permanent crew would sleep on station and the shuttle astronauts just slept on the shuttle the way they would uh, with any other mission. But recently we had commercial crew and that has brought a bit of a problem. So the station has room for six. 3 from Soyuz plus 4 from Dragon equals 7. So that's one too many. Somebody is out. Now I guess the astronauts could have played musical chairs or musical cabins to try to figure out who got the cabins and who didn't. But on Crew 1, very nicely, uh, Mike Hopkins, who is the commander of Crew 1, uh, basically said I'm going to be the one who stays on Dragon. So everybody else is in the built-in accommodations and he kind of set up his own space in Dragon. Which apparently worked out just fine. In addition, uh, NASA has sent up what they call the Crew Alternate Sleep Accommodation, which is uh, essentially a small, a, another version of the, the crew cabins that are in Harmony and it will be in the Columbus lab module and that's pretty much next door to Harmony. It's attached to Harmony so that would put everybody pretty much still in the same area. But this led me to like asking a really what I think is a really interesting question. Why are there only two Russian crew cabins? And this really doesn't make a lot of sense. You know for for a lot of the planning, you know, the idea was that you'd have th three people come up on Soyuz and you'd have three people come up somehow from, from NASA. And why don't you have room for those three people to be sleeping all on the Russian side? Now, in reality, because uh, the U.S. wasn't generally doing a lot of the handovers, sometimes the handovers happened with shuttle, but sometimes they happened with Soyuz. So the, the permanent three-person crew was generally uh, two Russian and one U.S. or one Russian and two U.S. And that meant you really didn't need more, more than two Russian crew cabins. But it seems kind of a strange way to do the design. And it's obviously problematic now. So I did some more research and I found out about Nauku. And Nauku is a multi-purpose module uh, that is designed and built by Russia. And amongst other things, um, it contains one additional crew cabin, and that would bring the Russian count to three and the total to seven. And this docks to uh, Zvezda. So uh, like the Temporary accommodations being next to Harmony. Here we have accommodations next to Zvezda, so that would make a lot of sense. Um, so the question is, what's going on with Na Nauku? And this was originally planned for 2004 to launch in 2007. Um, you may have noticed that it's not 2007, that it's many years past 2007. And the construction of this module has dragged on and on and on and on. But uh, with any luck, it will actually launch this summer. And the last report I saw said that it was actually at the launch site. So with any luck, um, we'll be back and there will be three in the Russian area and four in the U.S. area. And that is why the accommodations that NASA added uh, were called temporary. The hope is that this new module will show up and things will be great. There is a little caveat here. Um, Russia has recently announced that they might not actually keep participating in ISS. 
uh, in a reaction to some of the U.S. sanctions against Russia. And it's really not clear how that is going to fall out. But with any luck, this will join station and that will give Russians uh, more space to sleep and more lab space and more general space. And that all of those would be very great. So the question now is what happens during mission handover? So uh, here's a picture and this is crew two showing up while crew one is still there. So we have the four crew one members and the three uh, Soyuz members uh, all in blue. And then we have the new crew two members in black. And the question is, where do you, where do all of these people sleep? And the answer is, well, they sleep pretty much wherever they can find a place to sleep. So basically they work with uh, their ground control and kind of have some discussions and they might sleep in the Quest airlock or the Japanese Kibo mo module. They might uh, sleep in one of the docked spacecraft. It'll just be kind of a place for them, place for them to be temporarily. Um, until the, the handover completes. So, that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope it was interesting, and thank you.